This is the best tax-free college savings plan, in my opinion, and I use it with all of my kids. Now, there are three points that I'm going to go over with this type of account to help you understand why I think and why I use this particular account for my kids' college planning. Now, the first one is going to be that there are no income limits. Well, the 529 plan also doesn't have any income limits. The second point that I'm going to talk about is the tax-free growth that you can get in this account. Again, just like the 529 plan. But there are something that this type of a plan has that the 529 plan does not. And that is even more control over your investment options. And before we get into the video and I talk about this account and the points, even if you don't want to do the investments yourself, the investment choices inside of this plan are significantly larger than the 529 plans, which usually means you can get better performance in your plan with more control. Again, I'm going to say that's more of a my opinion, but with all any investments that you want to put in this plan, it's pretty darn good. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis Sickle. If this is your first time at our channel, welcome to the channel. Let's get right into it. So I want to talk about a resource, and I'll tell you what this plan is. It's the Coverdell Educational Savings Account, and I'll probably put it in the title, so you probably already knew that. And I've talked about this on other videos. I use it with my kids. The only thing that is different, and I'll say this right up front, is the amount that you can put into this plan on an annual basis. But it works great if you also have a 529 plan, which I do for all of my kids. In fact, we have two 529 plans for each one of my kids. But I use this because of the control and the tax-free growth that you can use inside of this particular plan. And I'm going to give you a great resource because this isn't going to be a comprehensive video. I just want to go over the points that I think are very valuable in looking at the Coverdell Educational Savings Account for your college planning and also K through 12, just like the 529 plan. And this is going to be the educational publication from the IRS that I want to just bring up for a quick second so you can thumb through it. It's written in more layman's terms, so it's a little bit easier to understand, but it's a great resource. And I use this stuff all the time to go over the facts and to make sure that all the points are in there because that's what these guys are basically written for. Now, they're not tax law, but they are guys that you can use to figure out which plan is right for you. And this is the publication. It's publication 970. And this is written by the IRS, the tax benefits for education. This is the 2021 edition. I don't believe the 2022s are out yet. But if we scroll down a little bit, you can see all the different types of plans and credits, anything educational related here. And you can see chapter number six is for the Coverdell Educational Savings Account also known as the ESA. And if we scroll down to it, we can see that it's talking about the income limits of 2000, um, or excuse me, the contribution limits of 2000 per beneficiary or your income limits of 110 to 220. And I'm gonna talk about, even if you make above or below that, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna show you strategies that you can fund this at any income level, it doesn't matter. You just have to know how to do it. So this is a great resource if you want to just kind of get the comparisons. Again, it's going to answer simple questions. What is the ESA? Where, where can it be established? Basically, any broker dealer will have an ESA or most of them will. Um, who can have it covered out educational savings account? You have to be under the age of 18 or special needs where you can actually fund it after the age of 18 and you have to spend it by the age of 30. So basically your college years for most, unless your special needs, it's a little bit different. So that was just a quick publication that you should take a look at. I'll, uh, I'll see if I can grab a link to this and put it in the description at the bottom so you can follow along. But let's first talk about the no income limits. And that's the point that I wrote down first and I want to talk about. So you saw there that there are income limits. And let me pull up a comparison chart for the 529 plan along with the Coverdell Educational Savings Account. And you can see I highlighted it right here. So let me zoom in here just so we can see this together. And I'll uh, pull it over here to make sure that you guys can see it. So the 529 is on the left where it has no income limits. But you see... I talked about no income limits, but there is an income limit with the Coverdell Educational Savings Account. And that phase out goes from 95 to 110,000 or 190 to 220 for married filing jointly. What the range is, is a phase out. So if you make 95,000 or less and you're single, then you can fund directly into your child's Coverdell Educational Savings Account, the ESA. And if you're married filing jointly, 190,000 or less. And as you move closer to either 110 or 220, the phase out begins and it's an equal amount. 
as you're moving through that. So if you're, say, for example, if you're in the middle of these incomes, can't do this math in my head, but if you're doing these, this income, if you're right in the middle of it, you could do 50%. So it would be $1,000. That's how you would do it right there with the 95 to 110 or the 190 to 220. Once you get over that, you can't do it directly. But like I said, here's the tax loophole. If you have an S corporation or a C corporation, then you can fund it directly with no income limits. You can actually also do this with a trust, but you would then need to have the trust set up. So if you are a small business owner that owns an S corporation, then you can fund the ESA at any income level. So there's another loophole too, and that is open up a UTMA account. So that is a regular investment account for your child. Just gift $2,000 and have them make the contribution because they're likely not to have income of 95 to 110,000 or yeah, they're obviously going to be single. So 95 to 110,000. So therefore they can make it directly for themselves and you're basically gifting that's $2,000. So it's under the maximum amount that you can gift without any taxable events. So you can fund it that way. So two easy ways, even if you don't have a, a small business that can fund it directly, then you can just gift it to your child and then they can fund it and voila, then you can just make the contribution. It doesn't have to be earned income. So that is kind of interesting when it comes to this type of account. It is unlike the Roth IRA where you have to have earned income. You can't gift your child money to make the contribution into their Roth IRA, but you can do it with the Coverdell Educational Savings Account. And another thing to note is that it is per beneficiary. So if everybody in your family got together and they all wanted to contribute 2000 to an ESA for your child, they could not. It has to be 2000 aggregated for all contributors. So if you're gonna do 2000, then nobody else can contribute to the ESA. But that is how you can get through the income limits. The second thing I wanna talk about is the tax-free growth. And just like a Roth IRA, it's gonna go into this type of account and it's gonna grow tax deferred and tax free as long as you're taking it out for educational purposes or qualified educational expenses. Again, publication 970 to help you sort out if you're thinking about, well, can I use it for this? Can I use it for that? We're not going to go over it in this video, but it is tax free growth for qualified educational expenses. So that is a huge benefit similar to the Roth IRA. So it's not it's not deductible going into this type of account, just like the Roth IRA or the 529 plan, gross tax for tax free, just like the 529 plan, Roth IRA, and then you can use it for qualified educational expenses, comes out tax free. So really you're looking at the benefit of the growth. And that's why I like to use these plans in conjunction because you need the time, you need that runway to actually realize the benefit of these types of accounts. If you know, if your kid's in kindergarten, you're starting to fund it, but you're gonna use it earlier on it, the college savings plans, they don't work. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Even the 529 plan, you use it for K through 12, doesn't make sense. So you don't wanna get caught there um, if, you're, if you're trying to fund it and then use it immediately. It's the growth, that's where the benefit to these types of accounts come in. And even with this cheat sheet here that I have, and I think I got this one from the IRS too. Um, actually, no, I got it from our broker dealer. Uh, no, somewhere else, I, I don't know. I, I got this one, if, a while ago. So anyways, we look at the uh, the 529 versus the Coverdell Educational Savings Expenses and you can look at the qualified expenses right here. And you can use them both for K through 12. This is the big difference. And th this was a recent change with the 529 plans where you can use it for the apprentice program, apprenticeship programs. I wouldn't be surprised if at some point they do that for the educational savings account. I think most people don't talk about it or actually I know they don't talk about it quite as much as they do with the 529 plans. So that's why you see less legislation on the ESAs or the expansion like you would with the 529 plans. I wouldn't be surprised if some politicians even know what the ESA was, but they've heard of the 529 plan. So that is something that is interesting about these types of accounts that you can use. And there's a lot of flexibility in them. And now the biggest one is the one that I left off or put on last. And that's the third one. And that is any type of investment that you can invest into, basically any security you can use in the Coverdell ESA. So if you wanna have your own stock portfolio, your own mutual fund, ETF, bonds, whatever, alternative investments, you can do it with the educational savings account where the 529 plans are limited to what's ever inside of the 529 plan. So not quite as rosy, not really ideal. Um, I like to have more control, obviously this is what I do. 
so I invest. So I like to have that control in designing the exact portfolio that I want for that plan. And there are a lot of benefits, not even just being more aggressive, um, like saying, okay, I, I don't have to have these diversified mutual funds or ETFs. I can go into individual stocks and have that upside potential. But also, you can go into more conservative investments as you work your way through school. So the really the only options, either like a money market account or a bond fund, but bond funds still going to have volatility, especially in this type of environment. And I wouldn't want it necessarily invested in that bond fund while my child's going through school or really invested at all because you don't want to take that risk, especially if that's the money that's getting invested. And just to throw it in the money market account, not really ideal either. So there are other investments. You can even use some CDs inside of these um, covered all educational savings accounts where you obviously could not, or maybe not obvious, but you can't in the 529 plan because they don't have them in the 529 plan. So that is a huge benefit and difference to this particular type of account. So while you're planning, it doesn't matter if you use 529 or ESA, what the spend down is, but if you want more of that upside, longer term growth, a little bit more aggressive in the ESA versus the 529 plan, then you can use that towards the end of college, maybe the, the second, third, fourth years, or even if you're looking at grad schools to use the Coverdale ESA and then use the 529 plan a little bit earlier. So take a look at the Coverdale Educational Savings Account. It does not aggregate with the 529 plan. So you can fully continue to fund your 529 plan, how you're doing it. And if you want to put some extra money in the ESA, you can. There are no contribution limits or combined contribution limits for that matter. So the 529 plans, you could put a ton of money and you could basically fund your entire college with it. Where the ESA, obviously it's a $2,000 limit. That's per year. So go ahead and take advantage of it. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and leave your comments down at the bottom.